Turning Point USA's annual action conference took place this weekend in Florida. Representative Byron Donalds of Florida came out swinging, warning how Democrats grab votes any way they can and Republicans must rise to that challenge. We have to go and find every vote. We got to find it in every church. We got to find it at every gas station. We got to find it at every nursing home. We got to make sure that at Thanksgiving, at Thanksgiving dinner, that your little cousin who says it doesn't really matter to me, that you tell him, no, you're going to go vote. Give me your phone. I'm registering you right now. Meantime, Congressman Matt Gates said that we needed to turn Biden out of the White House and warned about where he could take us if we didn't. A president who most days cannot find his pants should not be able to sleepwalk the United States of America into a war with a nuclear power. Former Fox News host Tucker Carlson went right to the heart of the Biden administration's actions. No one is ever punished for lying, but always for telling the truth. No one is punished for lying. People are only punished for telling the truth. You could literally wake up tomorrow, move to the Bahamas, start a fake cryptocurrency, defraud a million investors around the world of billions of dollars. I'm just saying you could do it, and I'm not recommending it. Note to the FEC, not recommending it. But you could do that, and you could get caught, and people might have like a balanced view of you. As for former President Donald Trump, he promised to stop the Biden administration's damaging policies. Under the next Trump administration, the censorship industrial complex will be defunded, dismantled, and destroyed. We're going to destroy it 100 percent. And any federal bureaucrat who had a hand illegally silencing the American people will be fired immediately. Is that okay? Trump asked the highly millennial and Gen Z crowd to stand with him and fight to save America. The Enjoy Republican presidential candidate began speaking here just a few minutes ago. He called Israel the most exceptional development in modern history. He said that for him and his wife, uh, the support for Israel is personal because of his relationship with God. Ron DeSantis has had some stern words when it comes to the United States uh, relationship with Israel on its 75th uh, anniversary. And well, joining me now is our very own uh, Greg Stevens. Hi. Governor DeSantis said something really strong. He he said, Israel in the United States has the same faith yes. and the same fight. Yes. And uh, it's been really interesting. The majority whip was in earlier, Representative Wimmer of Minnesota. Uh, he, quite frankly, was very bold in his in his speech concerning... He had some strong words, too. ...against Omar and some things. They are not holding Elon back any Omar. punches here at the convention in Washington, D.C. Right, right, right. And, Greg, uh, Kufi founder, Pastor John Hagee, who had some awesome words about uh, Governor Ron DeSantis as well. Open things up this morning. Tell me a little bit about what he, stood he out. He laid out the case of why a Christian should support Israel and mm -hmm. the biblical mandate for that. Right. It was very, it was, it was very telling in what he said. Also, right. um, they're laying out the talk about tomorrow on Capitol Hill. All right. of the people that are in attendance will be going to meet with their congressional representatives right. tomorrow on right. Capitol Hill. Because before we let you go, Greg, I know you're busy, but because this organization does something unique and special, they actually act on what they, they are do. saying. They don't hold meetings on the on the lawn outside. They go into congressional yes. offices and meet, and they're yes. doing a big one tomorrow. It's the Stop, Harass, Stop Harboring Iranian Petroleum Act. China's the biggest culprit yes. in the world concerning yes. that. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Greg. And we're going to hear from a lot more speakers in the next couple of days. And we'll, we'll be here covering Coup 5 for the next two days, actually, with live reports. I'm Fiora Dundas. Back to you, Mike. All right. Thank you for that, Fiora. And joining us now is a brave woman who has made it her mission to save the lives of unborn babies by closing down abortion facilities. We are pleased to welcome Missy Martinez Stone. Missy, great to have you on Victory News. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Missy, your organization explores the often overlooked side of the abortion issue, the supply side. Tell us why you focused on it. Well, Reprotection was started to meet a very specific need and to fill a gap that we found in the pro-life movement. And that was an issue between laws that were being passed, not just abortion regulations, but medical regulations that 
apply to anybody that practices medicine across the country, and the actual enforcement of that on the ground level by the state agencies. And so when we identified that rules on the books were not being enforced properly, uh, resulting in essentially unregulated abortion facilities, we decided to step in, fill that role, hold them accountable, and ultimately shut them down. And so why do you think these facilities bend and break the law and regulations that are supposed to guide them? Overall, what we've seen by the abortion industry is an entitlement that for some reason rules do not apply to them. And I think it has to do with the fact that uh, they view themselves as kind of a sacred cow. And on top of that, the people that are attracted to this industry, we see a, a, a huge moral degradation. If, if you are willing to dismember the most innocent, the, the smallest humans um, and harm women, you're okay with breaking some administrative paperwork rules. This industry does not attract the up and up. These are not uh, physicians that graduated at the top of the class. A lot of them have a history of medical negligence, of drug use, things like that. And so if you're willing to kill innocent human beings, you're normally okay with breaking other rules. And, and perhaps the most important question, how hard is it to get law enforcement and government agencies to enforce these laws and the regulations? Yeah, before reprotection was started, this was a massive problem in communities all over the country. Local pro-life advocates could not get their local state agencies to pay attention. And reprotection has come in and really strategized and honed in a way um, to make sure the state agencies are doing their jobs. And that requires um, lots of research, um, staying on top of these agencies, making sure that they are uh, doing what they are uh, responsible for doing, for going up the ladder. Um, it takes two to three years sometimes for them to step in and hold these abortion facilities accountable. But we have really honed that strategy to do it um, better, the best way uh, <clears throat> in these recent years. So, Missy, how does your organization, Reprotection, get leads on these clinics and then choose which ones to actually go after? Yeah, so we work really closely with the people on the ground. So that's the local pregnancy care centers. That's the, the compassionate sidewalk advocates that are outside. They are talking directly to abortion-minded families or to women that have been in the facility and have come out, and they hear horrific stories or have even witnessed for themselves a girl running out of the facility screaming, call 911, because she was so afraid for her life. And so we have developed relationships with uh, the affiliate groups that work with these local advocates, and they report incidences to us. So you can go directly to our website, reprotection.org, file a report about an abortion facility in your community, and we will investigate it, see if a law was broken, and who we need to uh, hold accountable. And a quick question, uh, how, how many tips do you actually get on a regular basis? I'm just curious. Oh, <laughs> they are coming in um, more and more every day, especially post row. We have uh, more rules we have to ensure are being um, enforced properly. So we're getting new ones every day. We currently have over 50 cases across the United States, and we are staying busier than ever. Incredible. Missy, thank you for sharing your story with us here. Yeah.